Will you conduct private workouts with Teddy Bridgewater, Bortles, Johnny Manziel, and is this, so is this another reason why you don't necessarily feel like you have to go to a scripted pro day? I think there's, we will have our, our opportunities to have private workouts, mm -hmm. and so um, when those take place and, and how we put them together and, and really being in charge of that workout is different than being at a pro day where it's orchestrated and scripted. So. Uh, there'll be those opportunities for us. There'll be uh, times for us to truly get into uh, having guys in on visits and depending upon who those names are and how we put that all together. Again, there's opportunities for us to truly get the knowledge that we want to have out of this process and not just generic. And just to clarify, the workouts cannot be in Berea, right? They have to no. be at their... They have to be at his hometown or at the university. Okay. So there's this... Uh, I think the, the language they use is within the metropolitan area, mm -hmm. so one of the two. And um, cameras captured Patton and O'Neill at Khalil Mack program. Um, is that the only one that the head coach has attended so far? It's the only one that he's reported he's attended. <laughs> <laughs> it, was that coincidental to his him being that from there? Is that right? Combine that trip? I, I think should we read more into the Khalil Mack Pro Day than, than others? I, I will let you guys take that where you want it to go. <laughs> so. Ray, are you are you leaning toward taking a position other than quarterback at number four? I'm not leaning in any direction. I think right now I'm uh, I'm going through all of this in a way that I think allows us to get to give us the best advantage. Um, again, the, the problem with explaining everything is that you start to target things and people start to zero in on exactly what you're doing and what you're thinking. The, ob the obvious for me is that to some degree everybody's guessing as to what we're going to do, which is a good thing. So um, I'm not inclined to give up any information as to which direction we're leaning or why. So I'll tell you right now we're on the balance beam and it is flat, so we're, <laughs> we're good. It seems though as though you're pretty adamant about getting the message out that you don't feel necessarily you know, compelled to take a quarterback at number four. I mean, you kind of want to make sure that people understand that that might not happen. I don't know if I'm compelled to tell you that we will take one or we won't take one. Um, I guess there's a possibility for every position at every at every spot. Um, again, the, the genesis for us is to create competition at every position and in a way that uh, gives us a chance for long-term success. Uh, we're truly focused on, on that process alone, or that, that vision alone that our football team is just continuing to create competition, continuing to drive the people that are on the roster that we feel can be quality NFL players and starters. Ray, why was the transition tag the best thing for the Browns to do in regards to that? Again, I, I would tell you I won't get into specifics of player contracts, so um, I don't think it's fair to the player, I don't think it's fair to the organization to discuss the uniqueness of why any any particular process is used, whether how we came to whatever agreements we came to uh, or how we decided that um, our players' uh, compensation, whatever that may be, was positive or not. It's, it's a business for us. Do you feel like, uh, I mean, if his agents have told me that he's in no hurry to sign the transition tender, he has until July 22nd, and they're going to let this go as long as they want, need to. Um, you know, what's your reaction to that? And will he, if he misses, you know, OTAs and those kind of things, what what, what is your feeling on all that? I don't necessarily have a, a feeling either way. Again, Alex is well within his rights to do the things that he thinks are necessary moving forward. Again, we're still committed to uh, making sure that he's a long-term Brown, and that's really our focus. Are you confident that can still happen despite the tactics that he and his agents have been using through the media? Again. <laughs> went to a seminar this morning and talked about relationship building. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm very confident. I mean, relationships take time. There's no good relationship that exists when it's uh, when the two parties are separate and you're not having a chance to interact. So uh, it's the continued interaction, it's the continued support, it's the continued vibe that I think that we're giving uh, Alex that I think will inevitably prevail. So I'm excited about those opportunities. Ray, with 10 draft picks, do you feel your roster is in need of using it, all of them as players? Or are you willing to uh, package a couple of them to maneuver? I guess for me, I, I don't look as... I look at the draft differently. I look at the draft as currency. So, um, the first round pick, be it early, be it late, is probably worth five years of a good player and a 
relative number. And the same thing, so on and so forth down the line. Uh, if you can package uh, picks to get a better pick or a better player or somebody that you think you're targeting, those things that always be considered. I do think that there's uh, opportunities to move both up and back in the draft. And um, being calculated in those movements, I think, is kind of what we really need to stay focused on. Uh, um, again, not overplaying our hand, not giving people an idea of genuinely where we're leaning, and then uh, giving us the most flexibility come draft day to maneuver up or back because people don't know exactly what we're focused on. This is your your first, I think it's your first visit to the owners meeting. It is. Because you've never been in this position before. Do you feel this is an opportunity to plant the seeds of future trade talk, or is it too soon? No, I don't think it's ever too soon. I think those conversations have already begun. As to, you know, hey, might be interesting. Mm -hmm. Just something to kind of keep in the back of your mind. So some of those talks have already begun, and uh, I don't know if there's any uh, definitives at the moment. I think they're all kind of, I'll say spur of the moment. When you're in the, when you're in there, you're on the day, and there's a player that you see that's available, you decide you want to go up, and it's a fluid, it's a fluid motion. It's a fluid part of, of what we're going to do. And the way I've seen it done, I don't know if anybody's ever agreed that before you even know who's at the pick, that, that you want to trade to get to your spot. I mean, the, the Rams. You know, the Rams and the Redskins. And they, but again, they knew they were guaranteed one of two. Yeah. So again, they knew they were playing a certain specific game. But as you get past that, it's almost impossible to predict. Mm -hmm. If we're picking four and somebody trades in the one, two, or three, then the dominoes fall completely different. So to move in and out, it, does, it doesn't make sense until you're, until you're at that moment, unless you know exactly what you want and you're going to one and get it. Have you talked to the, all of the three teams above you already about the, the possibilities of, of trading up? Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> do you, and, and when you're talking about opportunities, do you think there'll you'll have an opportunity uh, to trade down from four if you want it? Potentially. Again, it, it depends on how things fall. Okay. I mean, there's always um, there's always something that somebody else may want, and um, if it falls right, and you got somebody that I'll use the word leverage, but somebody something that you can leverage that somebody else wants that you may not cover as, as highly and still get what you want at a later point in time? Sure. All right, right now you have Hoyer and Tanny as quarterbacks. Um, uh, do you feel the need to acquire a veteran quarterback? Um, I think that we'll continue to work through free agency. I don't think free agency is uh, it's about a short-lived term. But again, there's this, there's this notion of if you don't do something like right now that you're missing out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's always the case. I think um, from right, Priest Holmes was assigned until like maybe a week or two before the draft in Kansas City. So he sat out on the street the entire time. No one felt his services were worthy. The Chiefs signed him and the rest is history. So um, styles make fights. There's opportunities to get players in a variety of terms. And so whether we sign a guy today, tomorrow, or in a week, or sometime in June or July, um, we could. But again, that player is going to have to be what we want him to be for us, uh, both short and long term. So. Uh, the benefit has to be there for us to make that move. Jeff Fisher said today that the Rams are interested in Mark Sanchez. Are the Browns? Um, but I would tell you that uh, we're interested in every player that can help us. So if, if the name is Mark Sanchez, you can apply that to Mark Sanchez. If the name is a different name, you can apply that to that person as well. But anybody we think is going to help us move forward, um, again, both short and long term, are the players that we're going to be focused on. Would it make more sense to bring in a guy who – has been with Kyle Shanahan and knows his system. Like, you know, Rex Grossman's out there. Um, that's interesting. Everybody sees a whiteboard in the back of a media room, and all of a sudden we're tied to the guy. Uh, well, it's a connection with Kyle. And again, uh, I would say that uh, every player that we look at will fit a need for us. And um, probably shouldn't use the word need, but will fit a, a role. He'll have a defined uh, way to compete and to play in, in our offense and our defense. So um, it's really about driving competition. If we think that guy can come in and compete to be a quality starter, then, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be interested. Ray, back home, everyone was uh, interested in a tweet that Joe Hayden sent out yesterday and was wondering if it relates to his future. The tweet was, it's a crazy business, and everyone got all excited. Is there anything going on with Joe Hayden that would uh, – Future with the Browns. With the Browns? Uh, I will say yes, but not the way you think. So what everybody's portraying to be the, the 
the news that they think they know is not necessarily the news that they think they know. So uh, there's opportunities to uh, to get into that at a later point in time. But um, I'll put all the I'll put all the innuendo to rest. We have no interest in getting rid of Joe Hayden. So that'll make it simple. We have no interest in that at all. So they guys. Extension talks are, are are they going well? Uh, again, I don't want to get into the particulars about anybody's contract, but um, we're excited to try to keep Joe here for longer than today and tomorrow, but <laughs> extend it into the future. <laughs> so. And um, uh, don't get up to shit. No comments. Uh. Oh, no. Um. <laughs> uh, oh, Ray, were you hoping to make a play for Matt Schaub? Um, in what regards? Well... I think most assumed with this contract that he would be released and uh, obviously hit the open market. And, and another Shanahan guy made, made a lot of sense to logically, um, but obviously the Raiders didn't let him hit the open market. Um, yeah, I think that it's always interesting. Like I said, anybody that's available, we'll discuss. Um, and when you get a chance to, to talk about any player in that regard, then you consider it. So uh, the fact that he wasn't on the open market, and Houston traded him. Those no, those things never really uh, materialized that way. Right, there, there's a lot 